Aaron T. Elmore is on a journey to spread love, hope, and inspiration in a world that seems to be full of discouragement, hopelessness, and hate. One poem, one podcast, and one message at a time. He is also the author of Love Letters, a collection of poems in the essence of love. Both book collections are centered around love because he recognized the need to distinguish the difference between real love and misrepresented love. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. Um, as the bio says, my first two books were love poems. And during that, that time when I put that book out, um, some of my peers and stuff, they didn't seem to gravitate towards it. I guess, um, you know, sad to say a lot of us as men don't gravitate towards love. I embrace it fully. So I said I wanted to do something kind of different that has some stuff in it that grabs more of a male audience. And so during the time I was writing this book, I uh, went through a lot of changes with the, uh, the content. Um, I was in the process of writing this around the time when uh, George Floyd was murdered and it, it struck me hard. And so a lot of my poems I was writing, it gave me like a relief and it, I was going through so many emotions, I couldn't really explain what was going on but writing helped me process it. And then I realized that the poems lacked hope and I always wanted to put some sort of hope in there. So there were some poems that didn't make the book. And then there was one that uh, it's called Familiar Fruit. It's my version of Strange Fruit. And I wasn't gonna put that in there, but my wife and my mother said that I should. I should leave with that book and then the rest of the poems leave with hope. And so um, I wanted to put some, some stories in because I've had conversation with my peers and stuff and this poem I'm going to read today is called Manhood. And having conversations with my peers, we, we noticed that those of us that had fathers in the home didn't necessarily make it a better situation because sometimes, you know, they didn't engage as much. And I mean, they really didn't know how to teach us how to be men per se. But um, through learning through each other and stuff, I think we came up with ideas that were weren't good ideas because we were kids trying to figure stuff out, but this poem is called Manhood. Every day we navigate through the labyrinth of manhood, unable to locate a map or borrow one from our fathers who are still piecing together their own. We stumble through the same way they stumbled before us, sometimes walking into wall, mistaking them for pathways, sometime walking down dead-end pathways, mistaking them for a way out. Through the frustration and confusion, we learn which turns we must make and which ones we must avoid. With every misstep and setback, we understood more that manhood is learning from the mistakes of the past in order to move into the future. Without fully understanding the assignment, we learn how to become men by instructing ourselves. We learned from our individual mistakes and took notes from each other's. Unqualified and underexperienced, we put together faulty lesson plans and fumbled through flawed curriculums, thinking that when we became adults, we would have it all figured out, as if getting older was an automatic rite of passage, a certification signifying achievement and a successful completion of boyhood. We learned how to become men through the guidance of each other. Observing all of the wrong ways, we eventually came up with a plan to get it right. I guess I'll read Familiar Fruit. So this is the, the poem I was talking about. It's my modern day version of Strange Fruit. Strange fruits no longer hang in the popular trees. They become familiar fruits harvested, harvested on the ground. The streets are bare. The streets bear familiar fruit, blood on the concrete and bloodshed with ill refute. Black bodies cut down like annual weeds. The, this familiar fruit streaming on the popular feeds Liberty and justice for all, accidentally shot when you made the call. Facades of equality sweet and fresh, then the sudden stench of another unarmed black death. Here's another fruit plucked too soon. Another peeled rind for the compost. Another fruit bearing tree that won't reach its bloom. Leaves withered and branches lopped. Here's a familiar and spoiled crop. And so with that point, what I did was I took strange fruit line by line and created my own version for each line. And um, 
I think that's that's it. Where can we find you on social media? Yes, you can find me uh, at the Brown Sugar Cafe on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. I also have a podcast, the Brown Sugar Cafe podcast, where um, I read some poems, but I have conversations with individuals. Because like I said, I want to leave hope in whatever I'm doing. So my podcast is centered around hope and inspiration. And um, yeah, it's available on all podcast platforms.